Sassy Southern Home. I am Christine. Thank you for returning if you've watched me before. And if you're new, I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, please. And hit the notification bell so you'll know when I'm posting. I do post weekly. So spring is coming. It's been a warm couple of days here in South Carolina, but kind of liking it. Except for on the weekends, it always seems to be raining or cooler, but it, we'll get that straightened out. Anyhow, so spring is coming and Easter is coming. So this is going to be part one of, I don't know how many parts, at least two of some Easter decor higher end. One is actually an inspiration from Pottery Barn and the others are just a little more elevated than just your Dollar Tree um, or everyday item makeover video. So please continue watching. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. First project, that was our Pottery Barn inspiration, and um, the smallest of those rabbits was selling for $69. So, I found this one at the Dollar Tree Plus section. So, it was either $3 or $5, I can't remember, but it's like a, kind of like a sisal, like a wooden material. Anyhow, so I picked him up and I just deconstructed him, took everything off of him. I've got some plaster of Paris left over from lots of projects from before and some water. So I'm going to mix this up to kind of a soupy consistency. Think kind of like um, cake batter, maybe, maybe not even that thick. Anyhow, so you want to mix it up good with the water, and I had to do a couple of rounds of um, the mixture. And um, I started out putting it on with the little plastic knife that I'm mixing it with, and then eventually you'll see me. I decided that it was just easiest to get my hands in there just to cover it good. But when you're, if you use something to put it on, a spatula or a knife, spoon, whatever, if you're using something, put it on, just make sure you always go down with it if you're buying this little bunny because he, that, his little hairs on him from that sisal, um, it will splash it all over you. Trust me. I had spots all over my shirt, my face, my hands, and everything. So just make sure you go down with it. And then I would just even suggest doing like I just finally did and getting in there with your hands, getting your hands dirty because it does wash off easily. So just get your hands dirty and make sure you give it a good coat everywhere. Uh, and the hands were easier to use because getting into his like his little armpits and up in his nose, his eyes, whatever. So you're just going to cover him all good. And I just used one good coat and let that dry uh, at least overnight, I would say. Um, I'll just let him dry for a good little while. And Plaster of Paris, it's still going to be kind of delicate between. He's not a heavy little object anyhow, and then you're putting this on. So he's kind of delicate. So just be careful when you're um, using him, transporting him or whatever. And some of the Plaster of Paris may fall off. So just be real careful when you're moving him. So once I got him all done... Then I just took him outside and sprayed him with two coats of a um, white matte um, spray paint and just got him um, sprayed down real good. So here we are just finishing up. And here we are painting him and then just let him dry real good in between coats and just cover him real good um, you just want to cover up whatever brown may be left whatever spots may be left because it was near impossible to get this plaster of Paris down into every little piece And then here is our 
final little piece, and he really did turn out cute. Now, I'm not sure he's going to last for years and years and years just because it's Plaster of Paris, but he is adorable for this year anyhow. Our next project, I got one of the little round signs from Dollar Tree, and I got the little bunny sign. So I'm taking off, and, and this may not be necessary, but this was like a car and it had like raised fenders on it. I took that off because I wanted it to sit fairly flat against the wall when I hang it. Then it had little beads up top, and I will reuse those somewhere down the line, but um, I want to use... Um, some Easter colored beads for this project. So I'm just going to take and where the holes are um, on this little round piece and the bunny, I'm going to take the spackling and I was having quite a time to get the spackling top off. I'm going to take the spackling and fill those in, let that spackling dry, and then um, sand both pieces down good. And there I am with the bunny as well. So I took the hanger off of him also. Then when they dried, there we are sanding them, I'm going to take the round piece and use my little gel stain that I have, little paint, and paint it because I want it to be a brown. And then the bunny's white, and I like him white, so I'm just going to, to cover up where we got that spackling good, I'm going to use two coats of ultra matte white paint and just spray him down good with it. And I had chalk paint there and took that away because I decided the spray paint would be better for the bunny than the chalk paint. It was just easier sometimes. So it's a gel stain paint. I got that from Hobby Lobby, and I have used this quite a bit, and it's gone a long ways. Um, I like it. It's a little thicker than a um, just a regular stain, and it dries pretty good, too. So I just like it. And I only did one coat of the gel stain, but so you just want to cover the board. Most of the board is going to be covered up by the bunny, but you're still going to be able to see it because we're going to do like a um, raised effect with the bunny. He's not going to sit flat up against the um, background board. He is going to be raised up using some wooden beads in between. So it kind of gives it a 3D effect whenever you get through it. So now, here's our supplies to get done here. We've got some jute twine. I've got, I had some balloons. That's into the project. Ignore those. Um, we've got these little carrots from Dollar Tree and some little flowers. I'm guessing those are supposed to be lavender flowers. And then I have some little Easter ribbon. So I'm turning the round board over because that's what I'm going to hang this project by. So I'm turning it over and using the jute twine and making another handle for it. Now when I got to doing this I decided that I wanted it to be doubled. And you can use just one um, string or I just doubled it. Now I use the same string I just doubled it over and you'll see when I get to that in a little bit. So these are the little Easter beads I call them from Dollar Tree. So I just figured out how many I wanted on there. Then I'm just going to simply hot glue the twine to the back of the, of the board. And my hot glue gun wasn't hot at first, so we had to wait and wait and wait. I, yeah, I didn't have it plugged up. Whatever, that's a long story. Story of my life. So anyhow, here we go with the hot glue and the glue in both sides down. And again, mine is doubled just because I thought it would be a little bit cuter. And some of this video I thought I was filming, and it got cut out, but essentially here's what we did. After we got this glued, whenever we get this glued, finally, then we're going to turn it over and take some wooden beads, and I used... I, I guess they were the larger ones, or maybe the medium ones. Anyhow, I glued them to the back of the bunny, and I did four of them to the back of the bunny. Then I positioned the bunny onto 
the round plaque. So he's already done, so I'm just showing you that that's the little ribbon I used. I just simply made a bow at his neck. Then I took those lavender and I used two of each color and glued those underneath his bow going down and then took some carrots and you can see how I placed them and glued them. Now on the beads that I took in between the bunny, and here's your final project. On the beads that I glued, I did super glue and hot glue just to make sure that it holds that the bunny doesn't fall off but you can see there's a space in between so i thought this project was adorable our next project this is going to be an easy one you guys if you've watched me before you know i love these little wreath um little grapevine leaves or whatever they call it wreaths wreaths yeah from hobby lobby so I use them every season. So what I do is I use floral wire to put my components in instead of hot glue and everything that way from season to season. I can take it off. So this was the Valentine's Day little wreath that I made. And I am going to use these cute little berries. Um, the berries from... These are Easter from Dollar Tree. And once I deconstruct my wreath, I'm going to do, and I did a bunch of two of each color. I did two bunches of those. And then I just bind those together. And actually, I didn't have to use any new floral wire. I just reused whatever was on there in that work. And then I had this little welcome tin sign from... Uh, it might have been from back in Thanksgiving when I had bought some supplies. So I had this left over in my bin. And I'm going to just take the wire and use that to hold it down to the little wreath. And then I'm going to take my little berries and um, put those up underneath it and just position it. And then in the end, my home sign that I've made a while ago. I keep using this little wreath over and over in place of the O and that is where we're going to use it. So this one was a fairly quick and easy project. If you found a sign that said Easter that would be cute. I was just using kind of what was left over in my pile and um so, yeah, it's cute. Just takes you a little bit to figure out how to turn these around. But they did, I could form them around pretty good. So that's the little finished project there. And then you'll see where I've got it hanging on my sign. The last project is simple, and I just kind of threw this one in here. Just show you what I did. So, found this cute little hanger that is a chalkboard and has the beads on it at Dollar Tree. And again, I am going to take these beads off. I'll re reuse them in the future, I'm sure. I'm just going to cut and take them off. Use my jute twine to make a longer holder on it and use those little Easter beads again. And then I'm going to use a chalk marker or chalk pen, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure if I got these. I've had them for a while. I'm not sure if I got them from Five Below or Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if Dollar Tree has any of these anymore, but you can use regular chalk. But these were uh, different colors that I found. And in my sloppy handwriting... I am just simply going to write out Happy Easter. It took me a little while to get this thing going. You just kind of press it down and then eventually the chalk would come out. And then that's all there is going to be to that project. So 
sometimes it's just nice to throw in just a simple, easy project because they don't all have to be hard. Anyone can do some simple DIY decor for their home, especially for the seasons because when you go to buy this stuff, it usually costs so much finished. But anyhow, finishing up, and here is it. Pardon my sloppy handwriting. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tune in for the next one next week.